After 20 grueling days of work, yeah, I'm being dramatic. It wasn't that bad. I mean, I got a few splinters. Anyway, my new home office is now complete. Finally. On this channel, I typically create story-driven film gear reviews, but now that I've finished building a new house, I'll also be sharing some stories documenting the transformation of different spaces in our new home. But don't worry, I'm still doing filmmaking content. In this video, I'm going to share my process and reasoning for creating a home office with four separate workspaces. For my office, I needed a desk for video editing because that pays the bills, one for gaming because I'm not addicted, a workbench because I like to tinker and I gotta be ready for the zombie apocalypse, and last but not least, I needed lots of storage space because I got all of this stuff, which is mostly all of my film gear, and all this has to fit into my 12 by 12 office space. To help me determine the best layout for my office, I use Planner 5D, which is a home design software that I first started using to help modify the floor plans when we were building this house. I absolutely love designing in Planner 5D because it really helps you work out the kinks of your build before you get started. For my video editing desk, I selected the Norton Gate Lake dining table from Ikea, which is constructed from solid birch. This table is really heavy which I believe will make it a durable and reliable anchor piece for the office. One of the standout features of the Norton table is its adjustable size, thanks to the retractable gate legs. This will allow me to easily expand the workspace when necessary, such as during product filming. Additionally, the Norton table boosts six generous drawers, three on each side, giving me enough room to fill them up with lots of junk. I mean, productive accessories. I decided to place my video editing desk sideways instead of facing the wall because first, Jason Bourne taught us never to have your back facing the door, and secondly, this was the best angle to eliminate glares on my screen from the two large windows in my room. My goal is to have no cords attached to the video editing desk. This is why I wanted a separate stand for the PC, since the only device that can't be wireless at the moment is the monitor. So to achieve a completely wireless setup, I mounted the monitor on the wall and ran all the cables along the wall to the PC stand, which I call my video editing tower. To attach the monitor to the wall, I used the Mount Pro single monitor wall mount. The monitor I chose is the 27 inch Asus Pro Art display. Shout out to Matthew and Cena as I learned about this monitor via his channel. This monitor comes color calibrated, which will come in handy as I do a lot of color grading. I also installed a floating shelf next to the desk so I would have a place close by to charge my phone. I completed the video editing desk with a wireless keyboard, mouse, and headphones. The video editing tower is secure and won't fall over. You may be thinking, I'd be nervous if my PC was so high, but don't worry. This stand is built in a triangle shape, which is the strongest. So it's almost impossible for it to fall forward. Almost impossible unless someone just pulls it forward. Additionally, the stand houses two backup power supplies for my PC and Wi-Fi, providing about one hour of power in case of outage. The power supplies give me an additional 18 outlets and two USB ports. Also on the tower is my Echo and two Bose Companion 2 Series 3 speakers. Even though they are not directly on my desk, they still sound phenomenal. The mids and highs are bright and clear. They are really minimalistic speakers, so there is only a volume knob, and so there are no external knobs to adjust the bass or treble. For my tinkering station, I selected the 48-inch FedMax workbench. It features a beautiful acacia wood top, which adds another much desired natural element to the office. The workbench has adjustable legs that can be raised up to 44 inches, allowing me to work comfortably without having to bend over. It is also equipped with wheels, so I can easily move it if I want to use it outside, which I have done several times already. One of the benefits of having a separate surface for my buildings is one, I will no longer scratch up my main desk, 
which I have done a lot in the past, it also allows me to take a break from editing without having to leave my office. Above the workbench is the wall control red metal pegboard, which is where I keep the tools that I use most often. Next to the tinkering desk, I have the HyperTuff 5 drawer tool cabinet. I was a little apprehensive about getting a tool cabinet. You see them in a lot of home office tours and I like to be unique, but you know what I like more than being unique? A good deal. I ended up getting this on sale from Walmart for less than $100, so yay tool cabinet. But I have to be honest, this thing is so useful. The top hatch has a hole for cords to come out of, so I use it to charge my power tools. You can use it to charge camera batteries if you want as well. In all of the drawers, I have various tools for my tinkering. The bottom cabinet is my cord overflow area because for some reason, I have to keep every single cord in the world. And now onto the desk for the little hobby that destroys marriages. <laughs> the gaming desk. To make this side of the room feel more open and spacious, I wanted a floating desk. A floating desk can make a room seem bigger as they don't have visible supports or legs, giving the illusion of more space. Although I ended up putting two support legs on the front, I'm still happy with the desk's appearance and I still think it gives me that floating effect. The chair I selected for the desk is the Office Star DC Series Adjustable Drafting Chair. It only cost me $147 plus tax. It looks great and is both comfortable and high enough for me to even sit at my 39 inch tall workbench. Besides the chair, for this setup, I already had everything else. I used the Razer Death Adder V2 gaming mouse and the Corsair K55 gaming keyboard both of which are wired for maximum accuracy. For headphones, I'm using the Stealth 700 Gen 2 Max. These are very nice headphones, but since they're meant for Xbox, they sometimes have connectivity issues when first connecting to a PC. After you connect them, they work pretty well. This PC was actually my wife's computer, which I built for her about five years ago. We traded and I gave her my MacBook Pro. I also installed the sound panel art behind the monitor to help reduce noise during gameplay and I think it looks cool too. It took me 14 days to complete the first three desk setups. After that I rested and then on day 17 I got back to work as I needed storage. So. I went back into Planner 5D to come up with additional ways to store my gear. To be honest, I was quite overwhelmed with the thought of having to fit all of my film gear in my office while still trying to maintain an open and uncluttered feel. But I have to get all of my crap out of the living room as we need to get furniture in there. So the first thing I did was organize all of my film gear and all the other stuff into categories so I could better visualize everything that I had. This made it much easier to come up with a plan for the gear closet and the rest of the office. The first thing I wanted for the gear closet was a dresser to build everything around. I first bought a dresser from Target that ended up being way too big. Oh, it's too big. I was really oh, yeah. sad about that, but hey, my wife now has a new dresser for her office. So then, after I measured properly, I ordered the Winsome Wood Halifax 5 drawer cabinet. This is basically a knockoff of Ikea's popular Alex drawer unit, but the Winsome Halifax costs way less. The drawers aren't as deep as the Alex drawers, but that ended up working in my favor and we'll get back to that. I used plywood to raise the drawer system so I could have additional storage below it. Then I glued and drilled the Winsome in place. For the top of the drawer system, I used thick MDF board. I didn't extend the MDF all the way to the left side of the cabinet so I could store tall items. Now the closet was going to need power so I called my talented handyman and friend Brian to help me out. In less than an hour he had an outlet installed by tapping into the light switch next to the closet. Big shout out to Brian for giving the closet power and especially doing it on such short notice. It took me another two days but eventually I changed that empty closet into a neat, usable storage area and voiceover studio. When I started working on the gear closet, I was reaching the end of my office budget, so I needed to keep the rest of the cost low for this closet project, so I mostly used what I already had. I already had the sound panels, 
cedar wood panels and I put the cedar wood panels in there to you know keep bugs out and it smells nice uh, when I'm in there I already had the mic mic stand and audio interface the SSD drive the mouse and keyboard the only things I had to buy were the winsome drawer unit the Acer monitor which I got for $80 at Walmart and the Mac mini m2 which is the base version at $599. Regarding the drawer unit, I use the top drawer for charging my film equipment. The second drawer is for my L mount lenses. The third drawer is for my Micro Four Third lenses. The fourth drawer is for random camera accessories that I use most often. And the last drawer is for all of my audio peripherals. The Mac Mini M2 was literally announced a few days before I started the closet build. So it kind of just worked out giving me an inexpensive computer to use for this closet project. So to record my voiceover for videos like I'm doing right now, I use Fairlight and DaVinci Resolve. And I also use the UMC 404 HD as my audio interface. And I use the Rode NT1 as my mic. Now, let's talk about all of the lighting in the office. All the task lighting in the office was repurposed from a lot of my old film gear. Starting with the video editing desk and video editing tower, I'm using two Alpha Home LED closet lights that I first purchased a few years ago after seeing them on DSLR Video Shooters channel. I used these for a few years when filming detail shots at weddings. For the pegboard behind the video editing desk, I'm using the Bolt 250 LED. I still currently use several of these for lighting wedding receptions. What's cool about this LED light is it comes with a remote so I can easily adjust it while sitting at my desk. At the tinkering desk, I'm using the Amaron AL M9 LED light. It's a tiny little light that I've had in my camera bag for years and I hardly ever use it. I think I may have used it once at a wedding. And it's not because it's not good, I just have so many other lights that I bring with me. So the M9 is small and powerful and I installed this surge protector right next to the tinkering desk so I can charge the light as needed or I can just leave it plugged in until I need to move the desk. In the gear and voiceover closet, I am using the Pixu Libar RGB video light. This was a more recent purchase and my initial intention was to use this light when I was filming B-roll of camera gear. But it just made sense and saved me money to use it in the voiceover closet. It has an app where I can completely customize the light and use different scenes and settings. I use quite a few LED strip lights in the room and I have one rule when using LED strip lights. I don't want to be able to see them when they're not on during the day. Next to the video editing tower, I placed the LED strip by Monster right under the cable management tubes. I used a permanent marker to paint them black and now they pretty much look like they're part of the tube. Behind the video editing tower, I have one more LED strip taped to the other side of the stand. This is so at night, when I need to insert an SSD drive, I can see. Behind the actual PC, I have another light, which is not an LED strip. It is a sunlight strapped to the stand, which illuminates my Iron Man poster. Underneath the gaming desk, I have some, maybe what are they, $8 Walmart string lights. You can only see them if you go under the desk. I may change them later, but for now they work. I have the same string light under the gear drawers. Inside the gear drawer, I have LED strip lights that are always on. And behind the sound panels, I have more strip lights that only turn on when the Mac mini turns on. And I have more strip lights here behind the red pegboard and here behind the black pegboard. The last lights I have in the office are above the gaming desk, which are the Zuku Light Smart LED light bars. And they also turn on at 6 p.m. So I know it's time to start gaming. We already talked a little bit about storage. I have the tool cabinet, which houses a lot of my tools. I have the winsome drawer that houses my film gear. Under the winsome drawer, I keep my drone and video monitors. On the right of the drawer, I have some extra light stands. And on the left of the drawer, I installed a magnet. So when I put taller film stands there, they will stay in place. I have another magnet behind the door of the room, which holds my C-stand and another large light stand. 
I put a little Velcro strap there as the magnet behind the door is not as strong. So it's a little backup just in case they fall off the magnet, which has not happened as of yet. Speaking of magnets, the two video editing tube lights are also mounted use magnets. Back to storage. I mounted these two bamboo trays to the wall to hold some of my filmmaking books and SSD cards for client projects. The last bit of storage I have in the room is this Husky toolbox that I've had for at least 10 years. It contains all the rigs and cages for my cameras and gimbals. I bought five $3 garage mounts from Walmart and that is what's holding up additional light stands and soft boxes and lights in the office. And you know, before this build, I wasn't the biggest fan of pegboards, but they are so useful. I have five of them in the room, and if I could fit more, I would. The one behind the video editing desk holds on the batteries so my wife and daughter can come and get some, holds magazines I've been featured in. The one behind the tinkering desk, of course, holds a lot of my tools and soft boxes. And the one in the voiceover closet holds my headphones, and the one outside the closet holds additional XLR cords. I'm not sure why I have so many XLR cords. I am definitely a fan of art and books, and I have some personal art that I created and other posters and pictures around the office that inspired me. In the gear closet, I have a painting that my daughter created for me. A lot of the cool stuff in this office were gifts, like all of the little action figures my wife and daughter bought me as Christmas gifts. I am really happy with this gift right here. I actually just got it this past Christmas from my daughter. She was so excited about giving me this. This piece of art right here represents the movie Whiplash, which is one of my favorite movies. So if you look at it from the left to the right, that is the whole movie Whiplash made out to the colors of each scene. So I think that is really cool. And to me, no office is complete without a few plants. I love succulents, so I have some right on my video editing desk since that's where I spend most of my time. On the shelf near the window, I have a bamboo palm, which loves lots of light. And on the gaming desk, I have a Ming Aurelia. My newest plant baby is my Jade Bonsai. Now I wanna get more into bonsais this year and so i started with the jade plant because it's actually a succulent and i love succulents we're actually growing a few more bonsai from little seedlings so i'll let you know how that goes well <laughs> that's my office took me 20 days to finish and I'm extremely happy with the results. I hope it will aid me in producing a lot of fantastic content in 2023. This year, I plan to post one new video each month, including gear reviews and tutorials on video storytelling. If you guys enjoyed this video and my dad jokes, please consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself and always film with story in mind.